Greetings humanity of all over the world. We are anonymous. The shadow forces behind the new world order, are following a slow paced agenda of total control over mankind, and our planet's resources. David Icke coined it, the totalitarian tiptoe, because they, are making very small steps towards our complete and definitive enslavement. As a result, the masses remain relatively unaware of the fact that their liberties are being gradually taken away, while the power of the New World Order octopus grows steadily. Somewhere near the very top of the pyramid, an extremely elitist organization known as the Council of the Thirteen Families, orchestrates all of the major world events. As the name suggests, the Council consists of the top 13 most influential families on Earth. An increasingly number of people is becoming aware, that 99% of the Earth's population is controlled by an elite of 1%, but the Council of the 13 families consists of less than 1% of the 1% elite, and nobody on Earth can apply for membership. In their opinion, they are entitled to rule over the rest of us, because they believe that they are the direct descendants of the ancient gods, and consider themselves royal. These families are 1. Rothschild, Bauer, or Bauer 2. Bruce 3. Cavendish, Kennedy 4. De Medici 5. Hanover 6. Habsburg 7. Krupp 8. Plantagenet 9. Rockefeller 10. Romanov 11. Sinclair, St. Clair. 12. Warburg, Del Banco. 13. Windsor, Saxe Coburg Goth. Personally, I suspect that this may not be the complete list and some very powerful lineages are still unknown to us. The Rothschild dynasty is unquestionably the most powerful, visible, bloodline on Earth and their estimated wealth is around 500 trillion dollars. They exercise their power through the world banking empire, which is almost entirely owned by them. The most important institutions that work hard to establish the new world order and completely enslave our species, are 1. The City of London, Finance, controlled by the Rothschilds, not part of the United Kingdom. Two. The United States Federal Reserve, Finance, private bank, owned by the Rothschilds. Not part of the United States. 3. The Vatican City, indoctrination, deception and scare tactics. Not part of Italy. 4. Washington DC, military, mind programming, brainwashing and depopulation. Not part of the United States. All of the above institutions function as individual states, operating under their own laws, hence, there is no court of law on earth, that could ever prosecute them. The multitude of secret societies in existence today, operate as branches of a mega corporation, which is owned by the Council of the Thirteen Families. Even though they have been handsomely rewarded for their work, the members of these secret societies are not members of the elite bloodlines, they don't know who their masters are, and they have no idea what the real agenda is. Another mass enslavement tool that they are using against us, is the so-called educational system. Schools are no longer what they used to be, and children are learning to memorize without thinking, and obey without questioning. In fact, this established educational system is extremely expensive to keep operational, and obsolete in the age of the internet. Why obsolete? You may ask. Because the internet gives us free access to almost infinite amounts of information. So why are we still paying huge amounts of money for governmental education? Because the world's elite require that our children learn conformity and inside the box thinking, Mankind's faith is hanging in the balance right now, as the control of the New World Order octopus spreads. On the one hand, we are very close to our complete enslavement, while on the other hand, we could easily crumble to the ground their pyramid of power, by simply uniting against their deception in a peaceful revolution of minds, hearts and souls. 
we've asked for years what their greatest weapon of enslavement is. Is it poor education combined with constant indoctrination? Is it the fear generated by religion? Is it the fear of being punished, jailed, or killed by the system, or is it the invisible enslavement of the monetary system? In our opinion, all of the above combined, had a huge impact on our society and the way we think, but their biggest weapon is hands down the financial system. The financial system has stealthy enslaved our species and now we are being used as currency slaves. We all work from 9 to 5 every day, in boring and depressing environments, not stimulated by anything creative or constructive. In most cases, the sole motivation for going to work, is the next paycheck, and no matter how hard we work, we never seem to have enough money. Have you ever wondered why mega corporations reaping billions a year in profits? pay dozens of millions to their CEOs, and as close as possible to the minimum wage to the rest of the employees? This has been carefully designed, because a person that is constantly on the edge, will never have time for self-education, introspection, and eventually, spiritual awakening. Isn't this our main purpose on earth? To become spiritual beings, and by spiritual, we obviously don't mean religious and complete the incarnation cycle. They don't need educated people, who are capable of critical thinking and have spiritual goals. No, this kind of people are dangerous to the establishment. They want obedient robots, just intelligent enough to operate the machines and keep the system running, but stupid enough never to ask questions. All of the world's biggest problems have their roots deeply embedded in the financial plague, Wars are profitable, diseases are profitable, Earth's plundering is profitable, human slavery and inhumane working conditions are profitable. Our leaders have been corrupted by money, and mankind's collective mission on Earth, has been hijacked by money. So why do we need the financial system, in the first place? Actually, we don't need it, at least, not anymore. The planet doesn't charge us a cent for using its natural resources and we have the technology to extract them without physically working a day. More to the point, there are brilliant minds out there, discussing the concept of a resource-based economy for decades. One example is Mr. Jack Fresco, a brilliant industrial designer and social engineer, who spent most of his life designing the future. The cities proposed by Mr. Jack Fresco will be built by autonomous construction robots and will be eco-friendly and self-sustainable, earthquake and fireproof. Other people are already discussing the transition plan towards the economy of the future, where money are no longer required, and all individuals will be offered the best conditions to reach their highest potentials, all for the benefit of our species, as a whole. So, our question is, are we ready to embrace the future, and escape the control of the elite in a world without money? Or are we going to allow the new world order plan to happen? We are all anonymous by default. United as one. Divided by none. To the rich, greedy, filthy slave creators. You will be removed. Expect that. Well, this is not surprising. When people are desperate, they will do this, definitely. This is breaking news. Mexico finds two border tunnels, underground border tunnels, leading from Tijuana, Mexico, into the U.S. Mexico City. Associated Press says, the Mexican police and Mexican soldiers discovered two clandestine underground tunnels in the border city of Tijuana, Officials believe were built to smuggle drugs into California. These tunnels were found in an area of warehouses, and they were across from the city of Ote Mesa, about 400 yards, or 400 meters, either way, away from each other. 
In other words, they were quite close, parallel to each other, only 400 meters, 400 yards away. The area immediately north of the border is also a warehouse district. So it's from one warehouse district to another. How convenient. Prosecutors said on Monday that one of the tunnels reached into San Diego and the other is still unfinished. The Mexican Attorney General's office stated the tunnels were apparently used by the Sinaloa cartel to move drugs into the U.S. The Attorney General also said it found tunnels after the U.S. consulate in Tijuana determined that these underground tunnels were being reactivated after apparently falling into disuse. So this frame of the underground tunnel, taken Monday, December 12th, 2016 from a video shot provided by Mexican Attorney General's office shows one of the two tunnels found in the area of the warehouses in the border city of Tijuana leading into California and of course prosecutors said that one of the tunnels led to San Diego, California the other is still unfinished so that's how they get their drugs into the US I'll leave a link below for you for this on CNS News